This next story sounds so outrageous, it's hard to believe, but it's true. An appointed member of the administration's Homeland Security Advisory Council supports terrorists. I'm talking about a guy named Mohammed el -Abiyari. He sounds great on paper as the founder of an intelligence firm. He's advised local, state, and even the federal government on combating terrorism. He was even awarded the FBI's highest public service award for his tremendous service in combating violent extremism and has been recognized in counterterrorism legal cases. But his bio conveniently forgets to mention that he's an expert on things like radicalism and jihad because one of his closest friends is a known terrorist. He has repeatedly shown support for Shuki, I, Shuki, I, I'm Shukori Abu Baker. Yes, I got through that. The former president of the Holy Land Foundation. In case you forgot, Baker and three others were thrown in jail after using their charity to finance Hamas. This guy went down as playing a key role in the largest terrorism financing trial in our nation's history. Now, the Department of Homeland Security, they're supposed to keep people like this out, not let them into an exclusive club of the administration officials who actually get access to classified information. Now, national security expert Ryan Morrow of the Clarion Project recently interviewed El Abiyari, and he joins me with the details. Okay, so give me some background. Where did, when did this guy become a go-to guy? Where did, where did he start, and how did he become a go-to guy for the administration? Well, he told me that his political career began as a Republican Party official in Texas. Republican Party. Republican Party. In Texas. In Texas. And he was also a delegate for McCain in 2008. And then he was brought into the Obama administration, specifically the Department of Homeland Security. And he's in a senior position. And if you've ever wondered why the administration is so confused about the Muslim Brotherhood, why they believe the Muslim Brotherhood is a moderate force that should be embraced by America, well, this helps answer that question. Well, wh wh where was he first? Was he hanging out guys like Baker? Or was he a Republican? Which, is, which came first? He was 16 years old when he first met Shukri Abu Baker, who we now know was an American Muslim Brotherhood operative who was wiretapped by the FBI telling Brotherhood operatives in a secret meeting, what you need to do is be deceptive. War is deception. It's a theme that he broadcasted over and over again to those that would listen to him. And he, at age 16, met El Abiyari, and he so impressed El Abiyari that they became personal friends. Now, where did they, where did they meet? He was working, I think, at a fast food restaurant, and okay. Shukri Abu Baker walked in, and, and they meet and become friends because Shukri Abu Baker starts telling him about the oppression of the Palestinians by Israelis. And from that day on, every single month, Mohammed El Abiyari donates to Shukri Abu Baker's group, the Holy Land Foundation, which has been shut down for financing Hamas. So he starts out as a 16-year-old kid working in a fast food joint, meets this guy who's, who's working with the Holy Land Foundation and the Muslim Brotherhood, and then he goes on to start a company later in life, Lone Star Intelligence. Where did he go to college? I mean, how did he get to the point where he could start an intelligence service? Well, I think it's important to notice that his connections came from being pop from political connections and from having connections with the Muslim community as an activist. That's why he was kind of the special, uh, special gift to the Republican Party and to those that wanted to reach out to the Muslim community because he had a record not just in intelligence with Lone Star Intelligence, but also a record as an activist and a bipartisan individual. And so he was brought into the Department of Homeland Security, and he's regularly saying on Twitter that basically his message is what will help save the Republican Party. But his message wait, wait, of inclusion. Is, is, has he served in the military? I mean, where did he get this intelligence experience? We, we got 16-year-old kid. We got fast food restaurant. We got... Uh, we got Baker. I'm saying the name wrong. Is Shukri? Shukri. Shukri, Sh Shukri uh, Baker. Where does he get the, the salt to start this Lone Star Intelligence? That I do not know. Okay. So we don't know if he served in the military? It all goes, I don't think he did. It all goes back to Lone Star Intelligence, his, his intelligence firm. That's his claim to fame. So he creates this intelligence firm. Do we know I'm who gave him sure the money what? to start the firm? No. Okay. So he conjures up this intelligence organization out of thin air, essentially. And as far creates as we know. His, begins to create his resume as somebody who the government might want working for them. Exactly. In the interview, we didn't go into exactly about that intelligence business. We were focused more on his ideology because he has written publicly saying that he knows the Muslim Brotherhood in, quote, a much more personal manner than the average white guy. And therefore, we should go to him as an expert on the Muslim Brotherhood. 
but he says that the Muslim Brotherhood is a not even a jihadist force, that they're a force that the U.S. needs to ally with. Why is he like the only guy? You're telling me there's nobody else. 309 million people in this country. Guys like Dr. Zudi Jasser. You, you're telling me there's, there's no second opinion here for the administration. There are, but there are also Muslim Brotherhood advocates. <laughs> Groups like the Islamic Society of North America. That's the top Muslim outreach partner of the United States. We know that's a Muslim Brotherhood front based on the Brotherhood's own documents and things that federal prosecutors have said. And it's also important to point out the influence of El Obiari. He is an expert on what he calls countering violent extremism because we can't say radical Islam. And in that capacity, there were new guidelines released by the Department of Homeland Security that essentially delayed knowledge about the American Muslim Brotherhood from the training curriculum. They say you cannot even use Muslims that describe themselves as reformers because they have an agenda. And so he says in, in my interview that Muslims that take on the Islamists are counterproductive. Okay, so basically this guy has become sort of a go-to guy, but we don't know what his experiences, it, what, which led to him founding this, but we're, we're trusting him to reframe training materials, uh, how, how we train people in, exactly. in violent extremism, not radical radical Islam. But this Lone Star Intelligence thing, we don't know that he has, we had any experience. He just cooked this up and is kind of, for lack of a better phrase, a quack. Well, the FBI seems to think that he has helped in some type of counterterrorism investigation, so there has been positive um, references to him, but there's a difference between counterterrorism and then countering the radical Islamic ideology. There are plenty of people out there that are pro-Muslim Brotherhood but still don't believe in carrying out acts of violence in the United States. And that's what we're finding with El Abiyari, is that what the fact that the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas are essentially the same, that doesn't seem to matter to him. He doesn't want an attack carried out in the United States, but he does want the U.S. policy to be pro Islamist. So, so, okay, right. So he wants to be able to get inside the administration and maybe get the administration to use our military to the Brotherhood's greater benefit, kind of like maybe, or at least maybe the State Department in the way that we sort of helped the Muslim Brotherhood take over Egypt for a short period of time. This guy is terrorist ties. Uh, nobody knows where his experience comes from, where this company he founded comes from, or who gave him the money. Uh, we know he's been associated with the Holy Land Foundation, and here he is hiding essentially in plain sight. I mean, he, he advertises this, and we give him awards from the FBI. Right. I didn't have to pull this information from him. He was happy to tell me about it. If you look at his Twitter page, he's very open about it. And it's not just about foreign policy. It's also about domestic policy. Because he says that Shukri Abu Baker and the Holy Land Foundation, that that prosecution uh, that shut down a financial pipeline to Hamas should never have happened. That the guy is innocent. Why? Because he knows him. And he says in my interview that he helped safeguard groups that were being, that are tied to the Muslim Brotherhood that were being looked at by the government. So you have an individual that, by his own account, has a long history of friendship with Muslim Brotherhood-connected figures in the United States and then helps shield them from prosecution and investigation. Does the Muslim Brotherhood promote the caliphate? Absolutely. And we're helping the Muslim Brotherhood essentially because of this guy. So in essence, because of this guy, we are knowingly or unknowingly helping them spread the caliphate. So if, and I'm thinking long, long game here, if I'm, if I'm El Abiyari and I'm Baker and I'm these Muslim Brotherhood guys, every time the United States helps them expand the caliphate, in the final evolution of things, if everything else is the caliphate but the United States, it's not going to really, they're probably saying, well, we don't want to tax now. We want to be friends. We want to help promote Sharia. Right, so you surround the United States with everything being in the caliphate, then it's over. That's an end game strategy. Sure, and he, El Biari also says that the Muslim Brotherhood is comparable to American evangelicals. And yet he says that he's an intelligence expert. Those two things don't go together. And I think that it's important to emphasize again, what was Shukri Abu Baker, his mentor's advice in private, according to FBI wiretaps, use deception. Play games with semantics. Shave That's how you beard, play the American listen to audience. American music. You might even drink a little bit to be show like you hey, be one of the guys. And he says it's justified because it's war. And this is the individual that was so close to El Abiyari. That's his advice. It's simply frightening. And El Abiyari also opposes the U.S. taking a stance against Sharia law overseas in Muslim-majority countries. So that is explicitly 
a pro-Sharia stance, pro-Muslim Brotherhood stance. Pro-Caliphate, which would be a caliphate. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Scary stuff. More perfectly executed political analysis next.